did a, an edition of Shane's Bond for a while and that's basically because we recorded uh, Shane's views after You Only Live Twice and then some fool, me, uh, dropped the hard disk and um, with the file on and uh, it corrupted them so we've had to do it again. Uh, and I was wondering about how to, how to do this, whether we should watch the whole film again and then I thought no actually it would be quite interesting to see if Shane actually remembers anything about it whatsoever um, because so many of the Bond films have obviously very very similar uh, a very very similar format and uh, I just thought it'd be interesting to see what he had to say about it and whether he could even remember it so this is what happened when I sat him down and asked him to tell me all about You Only Live Twice uh, That was the last Sean Connery one it was I can't remember it. There ain't no twice. <laughs> okay, so this was just a little, just to jog your, your yeah. memory a little bit. This was the one where um, Bond was turned into a Japanese uh, ninja. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Orientalism was strong in that that one, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah I remember that. Um, This really hasn't stuck in your mind, no, has it? No, it hasn't, no. You see, if, I, if I'd kept, if I hadn't deleted the, the, the film, I mean, we had quite a good discussion afterwards. Yeah. But that was several months ago, actually, yeah. now. And, and I, um, it just shows you, uh, we, we're not going to watch it again. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, I might at some point, uh, but I don't want to put you through it. And, um, okay, so... Uh, if you remember right at the beginning of the movie, uh, Bond was uh, with a lady and was seemingly shot dead. Uh, hence the title, You Only Live Twice. Like They wanted to yeah. throw, throw the baddies off the scent that, you know, to suggest that he was, he was not alive anymore. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. And then he was buried at sea. Yep. Even though, and he was actually buried at sea with, a, with an aqua lung and everything. Oh, yeah, then he goes swimming with the wetsuit. And then he comes out of the wetsuit and he's in a tub. No, that's no, that was that was Goldfinger. But no, oh, okay. was, they all start to merge because pretty much every Bond film is the same. But no, he was he was dragged back onto a ship uh, after his funeral right. and, uh, An and started ship? again. No, I don't think so. No, but the point is that his his death was fake, so that right. he could get away with more shenanigans, and then he ended up finding Blofeld in the crater of a volcano. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they had to, yeah, climb up the volcano, yeah, and go in. Yeah. yeah. And that's how they disguised it, right? The, yeah. And yeah, it, and so it, it opened, rockets, yeah. Yeah, it opened up and it was rockets, that's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so the Americans and the Soviet Union were going to have a war because their, their, their space missions, their rockets kept going missing. That's right, yeah. And it was yeah. basically Blofeld. Stealing them. Oh yeah, the big thing that came and then yeah. Oh no, he was stealing their astronauts. Yeah, that's, that's right. what he was doing. Yeah yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, I do remember that, yeah. Yeah. Well how could you forget yeah. something like that? Yeah. So we had Donald Pleasance as as Blofeld with a nice big scar and a bald head. Yeah. That really yeah, well, yeah. Cool. yeah, yeah, yeah he looked pretty good, didn't he? Yeah. You see I thought he was quite a good good Blofeld. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Um and I think that that's the first time we've seen Blofeld as well, properly. That's the first time we'd actually like just the hands before, seen right? him. Um, and obviously now we're filming this after we've watched a few more films, which is yeah. So we've done this out of order, haven't we? Because um, now you know that there are other films with Blofeld where you actually get to see him, and it's a different different thing and all the rest of it. Um, and also. There was a few a few little differences in your only live twice. So in the past we've seen Bond get his gadgets in the office in Whitehall and yeah. then he goes off into the field. In this one we saw Q come out to Japan with something called Little Nelly. Little Nelly was a little helicopter that Bond oh, flew behind. Do you yeah, remember that? I do remember that, yeah. So what yeah. did you think about that? The fact that they're kind of tweaking the formula a little bit, trying to keep it fresh. Yeah, I was am I right in thinking that he wasn't in London at all. Like, did we not see the secretary until the end? 
Like, I think maybe oh my goodness, now right? I'm testing my knowledge of your own NF twice. No, yeah. I think we do. Because oh, oh. he wouldn't have been briefed, right? Like. I think maybe we see them on the ship at the beginning. Oh, okay. Maybe. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Like, yeah, that, um, yeah, and you had like little guns on the side and stuff, didn't you? Like. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It, was a, yeah, it was quite a good gadget, and because he, he was like attacked by lots of other helicopters. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, we had the kind of yeah, yeah, the, the yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, they were kind of like ramping up. Like, I, well, I guess like a few movies in, you got to ramp up the action, right? You got to be bigger and yeah. better every time. Like, yeah, um, yeah, that was yeah. I don't remember any of these other gadgets like from that. Like, yeah, old man coming over, but yeah. No, I can't remember offhand. And um, there's also some strange scenes where he's like, someone is supposed to kind of kill him. There's a woman that's supposed to kill him with uh, a in a helicopter. He's kind of like transported and he's trapped in this helicopter and then she jumps out with a parachute and he manages to kind of like, you know, he manages to save himself. It was just kind of bizarre. Yeah. Or maybe it was a small plane. I can't remember. Yeah, offhand. I don't remember. <laughs> just, you know, oh, no, well, well, why would you? You know, it's, it's, easy, it's easily done. Uh, so, yeah, that was quite... I mean, there's not much more we can say about this, really. Not yeah. unless we watched it again. And I've, I've decided that we're not even going to see a trailer of it to, to refresh your memory. The very fact that you can't remember much about it yeah. says well, a lot. I remember it? the ending... Um, like the big fight at the end, like the gun battle at the end. Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember that, like images of that. Um, like that's kind of like what I feel like with a lot of these movies, I'm just kind of remembering like scenes, but they're kind of all blurring into like, just blurring, like, you know, like with the scuba diving, like I like that could have been an even movie, right? And it wasn't in this movie. Like it's just yeah. all kind of blurring into one. Yeah. Like that's the thing, it's just like, a lot of this is just the plot is there just to get from one like little core cool device or scene to another. Yeah. Like, you know, which is... And the plot is pretty much the si similar from, from the other ones, isn't it? Pretty yeah. Much. So the film before this was Thunderball and we saw Spectre um, taking a couple of nuclear, uh, nuclear missiles that they used to kind of um, put the world to ransom and now we've got a situation where they're... Um, stealing astronauts to do pretty much the same yeah. thing to get America and the Soviet Union fighting each other. What did you think about the fact that uh, the British kind of are portrayed as this neutral kind of neutral power in the world that's trying to stop yeah. the Americans and the Russians having a, well, having a fight? It's kind of like the the British state but like the British deep state right like it's not the British state like it's it's not the prime minister it's not the cabinet you know it's not the the military it's the deep state that's kind of like our like amazing intelligence you know like doing all this like thing behind the world like we're kind of America might think it's the world police or whatever but we still have the best intelligence we're still the smartest all oh, right so you think that this is saying something about Britain's view of itself in the world or, bit, or Britain's yeah, position in the world? like I think that like um perhaps it is like uh maybe like it's like a bit of a throwback to like the empire and like and when Britain was like super strong enough but like I even like today like you know like I remember like with Brexit like you know a couple of years ago Theresa May said we have like great intelligence you know that's a bargaining power within Brexit yeah. like yeah. I think that like British intelligence is uh, I don't know what the reputation it has around the world, but at least here, I think that that's something that like people who are into the establishment, support the establishment, are quite proud of, right? Like, it's yeah, absolutely. But it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, this is this is an American franchise right. for all intents and purposes. But that idea, I think, I think you're right. I think you've hit on something that's true. You, I mean, one of the things I'm thinking of is is the very fact that all the way through. Uh, the twentieth century, as and now, as Britain is declining, its view of itself remains incredibly high, and perhaps is over exaggerated. Yeah. And I just think that comes through in these movies a little. Oh bit. yeah, definitely. Yeah, like you know, the sophistication and like well cultured and like well mannered and yeah, kind of like all knowing. It's very like paternalistic. Yeah, you know? and Bond kind of embodies uh, a kind of Britain that. Is a little bit of a smart ass. Oh, for sure. Yeah. That knows about culture. 
yeah. and defines it and judges everybody else on it. Yeah. Bond is very much the snob. He isn't a snob in the books actually. Snobbishness is something that he oh, hates really? in others uh, in the books and he just, he just knows his stuff. Yeah. He doesn't boast about it quite like the film character does. Yeah. But he is alright. He's not, he's not a pleasant individual I don't think in the movies. No, no. Not and yet he's quite fun to watch as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. To a yeah. certain extent. Or maybe you don't feel he is fun to watch. I, uh. I, uh yeah. I, I kind of find like. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. Like, it's the first Bond that I like when he wasn't so much like that, right? When yeah. It was like a bit like he was holding back a little bit, you know, and it was got a little yeah. more depth to the character. Like, whereas this, you kind of know what you're getting, which is fair enough. Like, like yeah. you know, people. Kind of like, it kind of makes me think that like, you know, why do people today go and see like Transformers and Fast and Furious movies? Because you know, you're going to get and you just sit there and you're entertained. Like, I feel like this is that, you know, the, that type of movie in the 70s and the 60s and 70s. Like, you go in knowing what you're really going to get. You're just kind of waiting for the kind of cool, like, oh yeah, like, you know, kind of pushing like action on like movies and stuff. Like, it's just every time getting bigger and better. Like, yeah, I'll kind of put it in that category. Yeah, I think that's probably yeah. fair enough. I think it's uh, it's interesting, isn't it, that um, people want a little bit of escapism. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. And what you get with a Bond movie, particularly in the 1960s, is you get to see a place or places on the screen that you're never, ever likely to go to. Yeah. So seeing, you know, tr places in, you know, hot, hotter climes or, you know, tropical countries or, you know, just... just People didn't travel in the way that they do now, mm. and still most people don't. So you know, you get to see somewhere which is unusual and interesting, and you get to see somebody doing at least exciting things. Yeah, yeah it's taking you somewhere. Yeah, even okay. if the themes are like just now, a lot of the themes are just way out of place. And you know, just thinking about that idea that you know you can turn James Bond into a Japanese man by giving him a, giving him a haircut and right. fiddling about with his eyes a little bit is just really offensive, isn't it? I mean, yeah. You know, you, it just wouldn't happen today that movie in that way. No. <laughs> and then also like kind of thinking about the context, the social context of like the Cold War and kind of like the acceleration of like technology and technology, mm. but like you know what were the governments doing, what were secret service doing, like what technology was there, like yeah, it's kind of, that, that probably plays on it as well, you yeah. know, like yeah, kind of, yeah, I mean, because like a lot of the stuff that we're all, like when we watch it, it's just like, it's ridiculous, you know, mm. I, I mean, I don't know, maybe in the 70s it probably is ridiculous, but maybe, you know, people are watching it in different, different like lenses and stuff, so like, yeah, you know, it would be like, I mean, we'll never know, like how they went in and watched it, but like, it's, it's something that, like, what I'm thinking about and like yeah yeah